Hi, Magnifying Exalt, your incredible, phenomenal name. Lord, we, we, we are a, a company of people that's in your fellowship, that has questions, that gets answers, that engages you, that loves you. We're not religious, we're not in some man-made box. We have broken out of all of that, and we stand in you, in the fullness of the yacht, hey, vav, hey. We're in a new age, we're in a new era, we're in a whole new level of understanding, new dimensions of revelation coming at a company of people that says, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we want more. We're done with the, with the religious church, we're done with, with, with just being mere little Christians, little Christ's. We are sons, we are daughters, we are kings, we are priests, we are oracles, we are legislators, we are literally co-ed with the creator of heaven and earth, we are co-ed with our, our God, the, the fullness of, of all infinity, the power of, of all creation, the glory of all that exists. We are in the midst of this beautiful, awesome God and He is pouring, you are pouring into us. Father, let us begin to understand what that means. Let's begin to understand what it means to be in you, not in a confession or in reading or in studying or meditation, but to physically, as a spirit being, go in to all of who you are and to be dressed in you and clothed in you and consumed by you. To understand that it's not some religious act now, I can't do anything, I can't say anything, I can't touch this, I can't touch that, I can't look at that. It's no longer like that. We are covered in the blood, we are set free, we are pure we are holy we are completely and utterly in your image and likeness let's understand that measure let's understand that fullness let's begin to walk in that revelation and know that it's not about a doodle list of things that we need to have and not have and, and understand and not understand and say yes to and not no to and let's understand that you are setting a company of people in order with the first estate who I am from the beginning when Yahweh said, let us create man in our image. That image is what we are setting back into. We're going back into your beginning to reveal and release to us who that is, what that is, and we need to begin to believe it. So Father, let's understand that there's everything, every tool that we need has been given to us. And you're calling a company of people that will open up who we are to receive all the things that we need to be progressively propelled back into position according to what you created us to be. Father, we love you. We praise you, we thank you, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay. Whew. I don't know if you guys, um, you know, I was driving like 40 hours, so 20 hours a day, 20 hours back, and I'm sure if you've driven that long, you know what I'm talking about. When you get out of the car and you go relax the first time, it's like you're tripping. It feels like there's something wrong with you. And uh, ever since I got back, every time I take a long drive, when I, when I came in here, I said, I don't feel right. That's what it feels like. I'm, I'm tripping, like something is going on. So it's a weird feeling. Um, but sometimes I feel that that is also God kind of opening up something to us, you know. Because why am I feeling like this? You know, and I don't base my life on feelings. And I, I really, it's important to understand that it's not about a feeling. It's not about what I feel. Now, my feelings are important. But I can't base my entire life on what I feel like. When I, when I, I come into the room, I, this is what I feel like. Well, I don't care what I feel like because I know who I am. You know? And it's almost like God is calling a people that understands that it's not how you feel. It's not the things that you feel around you. Uh, even though it might be demonic or it might be of God. It might be good. It might be bad. It might be yes. It might be no. I have to get to a point in my life where I'm set in a revelational understanding of who I am, not based on what I feel like, but who I am, what I'm surrounded with, what is truly there, not, not what I might feel because I didn't have a good lunch or I didn't have a good breakfast or um, I have a headache or I have an ear infection or I, my eyes are blurry and I can't see too well or whatever the situation in your life is. It's not based on, on in anything that's happening around me. It's what is in me, who I am. That's why when, when, when we get home and there's issues or there's problems, it's not about the issues or the problems. It's about standing in who I am and breathing the breath of Yahweh into the realm that, that aligns things, that needs to be brought back into order. You know, like we were talking about, it's not, life happens no matter who you are. You know, no matter what happens around you, we stand firm in Him. We stand in who He is. And so what I'm going to try and do tonight it's, um, I'm going to touch on, on the house of mantles and for us to understand that Yahweh has a mantle from, from, from the kingdom of heaven for each situation you find yourself in. Um, not just situations, but there's crowns and there's garments and there's mantles that Yahweh gives us as we engage in the heavens so that we can grow in the order that He set out for us. 
You know, I look at the body of Christ right now, and I'm hearing the church preaching the same stuff. I'm hearing people say, oh yeah, my pastor started teaching this stuff as well. And it sounds great, and it is great, but we have to remind ourselves it's not information. It's not about information. It's about engagement. It's about lifestyle. It's about presenting yourself in a revelation to the Father and not saying, well, I'm praying for Italy, and right now, Lord, I want this to happen, and I want that to happen. It's physically going into that country as a spirit and bringing alignment to it as you see the Father, according to the blueprints, giving you. Does that make sense? Then I, I turned to see who was talking to me. This is in Revelations. And when I turned, I saw seven lampstands. Among the lampstands, there was someone like the Son of Man. Now, and I've talked on this before, we have to remind ourselves that Yeshua is the Son of Man. Right? This is our revelation. So, among the lampstands, there was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with, with gold sash around his chest. His head and his hair were um, white as wool. In fact, as, as uh, white as snow. His eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like glowing bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of raging waters. In his right hand he had seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun when it shines in full force. Now this is an image of the sons of Yahweh. You know, when, when John saw this, he saw into the future what the body of Christ would look like. You know, it wasn't Jesus. Now, you say, well, it was Jesus, because if you read on, the Bible tells us that it was Jesus. But we forget hmm, that we are the image of Yeshua, which means we are dressed and clothed in what He is and who He looked like when He was in the earth. We are sons. We are daughters. It's not Jesus being, and I say this all the time, and because I don't think we understand it, we've made Jesus something that He's not. Although he is, what we, he is what we believe on this side of the veil, but he didn't stay on this side of the veil. He went on the cloud and he appeared and disappeared into another dimensional realm where we now go to to spend time with him, not as Jesus, the Son of God, but as the attribute of yod Hey vav Hey, where he is the attribute of the Son. We have the attribute of the Father, we have the attribute of the Spirit, and we have to understand that God is the three-in-one, like I am three-in-one, because I'm in His image. I've got Spirit, which is the primary me, I've got soul, and I've got body, and the idea of this is to look upon the image of Yahweh and to become that. That's why I divide body, soul, spirit, on this side of the veil with the sword, which is the word, the three dimensions of the word, and I go back into the kingdom of heaven. I take my body, soul, and spirit, and I reunite my body, soul, and spirit in Christ, because in the reunite, I bring the body and the soul and the spirit to its position where it begins to understand and perceive who the original, what the original order of man is. And that's the process that we're in right now, too. Bring all things back into the original order to understand that Yahweh is calling a people that will shift back into the end, you know, into the was before the was was was, into that place where Yahweh said to, 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 to all of who he is, let us create man in our image. You know, that image is, is not Adam and it's not Jesus. You know, it's a dimensional fullness of what the man has to become. That is the image that Paul looked at. The head and hair were as white as wool, in fact, as white as snow. His eyes were like flaming fire. This is another being, this is another species. His feet were like glowing bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of raging waters. In his right hand he had seven stars, out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun, when it shines in full force. This reminds me of Moses coming out of the mountain of the Lord. You know, lightning and fire coming from his face. The Bible talks about, um, if you look at some translations, it says horn-like appearances, which to me is the lion, ox, eagle man. You know, as he comes in 40 days, spending that intense eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball time with Yahweh, he comes out into the natural realm again, and that image that he behold was the image that was seen. You know, and we have to get to the place where, you know, I remember a time in my sermons in the New Orleans I had, uh, people tell me that my face was turning into a lion. I had a guy tell me that my face turned into an ox. I remember lying on the floor engaging, and I could feel the, the, the breath of this being breathing on me. And when I looked up, it was an ox. You know, and it wasn't an ox like, oh, it was an animal. It was God giving me the understanding of headship. God giving me the understanding of 
what it means to be a legislator, to understand that dimension of Yahweh. You know, it's a, it's a mantle that he places on him, on us. It's a dimensional shift that comes to who I am on a continuous basis. Because if Yahweh is training and teaching a company of people, then we have to let down our God. We have to set who we are up to a new place. We can't believe the same things. And I say that it doesn't mean that the things we previously knew wasn't of God. It means it was a portion of the truth for the time that we were in and the measure that we could understand. And as I grow and as I mature and as I shift, I realign who I am. When I realign who I am, the same revelation I carried previously has adds on, add-ons. Right? It has add-ons. So I no, don't believe the same thing anymore because there's two additional portions of the word that comes to that same revelation. So it adds on to the revelation and I begin to realize that the small portion of truth I had has to shift, has to change. That's why I said on some of my reels, I have to live a life of repentance. It had nothing to do with sin. It's constantly changing the way I think, changing the way I understand things, changing the way I believe, changing the way I perceive or view things. Because the understanding I have is for a moment. And as I grow out of that moment, the next time I see that exact same position, I have to look at it from a different point of view. Right? And that is what happens when you, when you shift in a line, when you begin to see who the Father truly called you to be. That's why the seven spirits are so important. That's why the understanding of these beings is so important. I mean, I've been teaching this for 10 years. And uh, my focus and my main message has always been the seven spirits. And I say that because it's not the only part that we have to engage, but out of the seven spirits, every other encounter, every other revelation, every other understanding comes into view. And I've said this before, we have to start with dividing soul and spirit. Once my soul and my spirit is divided and I have the capacity to go into the kingdom of heaven, I walk with the seven spirits. And the seven spirits is the position that I carry in the kingdom and it is the reveal of it. And of course, when the Father starts revealing the position in the training and equipping to this place, I get mantles and garments and, uh, and crowns to erect who I am in his kingdom, to have a new understanding and revelation. Because the church has taught me I am this broken down piece of trash who just can't do it. I, I need Jesus. Yes, I do need Jesus. Absolutely. But it's the foundation. Once the foundation is laid, what then? Then I have to build upon the foundation. And so the building upon the foundation is where we act now in our discipleship. Getting trained, getting equipped to go higher, deeper, wider, to set who we are in the kingdom of heaven, in the heart of the Father, where He pours revelation into us and the frequency of who He is begins to train and equip us. I want you to have this scene in your head. Picture this. Yahweh yeah, talking about Yeshua. It says, dressed in royal garments, a crown of the most glorious jewels on his head, radiating light. The wounds from the crown of thorns that was placed on his head are portholes out of which the glory of, of his being now radiates. Dropping from his shoulders is a blood red mantle with a train. Uh, it is uh, edged with what looks like white em Ermine, if that's the word. The garments are white with the light of the rainbow in them. He is, uh, is dressed in majesty. He walks down the aisle to our throne like a ruler, a ruling manok, which he is, together with, with Yahweh. Heaven entrances in, in, in with his beauty. He is pure light. Mingled, uh, mingled with love and the vibrancy of life. Now, this sounds amazing, and if you can picture this view, I want you to see it in the same breath as who you are to become. You know, I remember prophesying over my, um, my pastor in South Africa. He's gone through things that no man should go through. You know, he's this beautiful, incredible, phenomenal, powerful man of God, and he's just gone through some stuff that I... I know it broke him into pieces. And I remember the whole team sitting around him and we just laying hands on him and just, we call it a hot seat. You know, where everyone in the room prophesies over you, prays over you, just blesses you and just breathes on you. And I remember speaking an image that I saw into him. You know, it was a radiant man standing in a position with a cloak on where there was diamonds and rubies and there was fire and lightning and there was revelation and knowledge and there was, there was almost like a magician uh, if you can put with all this power, like if you remember 
Aladdin right at the end where, where this uh, evil man said, I want all the power in the world. And, and then he realized that he had to become a genie because yeah. the genie has all this power, you know. And then he realizes afterwards, oh, poop. You know, um, uh, the genie doesn't have all the power. The one who owns the genie has the power. So it's almost like, but anyway, in this, in this vision, in this engagement, I remember I saw his respond to this image almost as like, what are you even talking about? There's no one that looks like that but Jesus. But we have to remind ourselves that this is what Yahweh has called us to be. You know, what I have right now, the understanding I have right now, the authority I have right now is very limited to my belief system. But when I enter into the kingdom of heaven and I begin to sit next to my father and I begin to understand what he's called me to, you know, what I have to, to my beck and call, the things that have to be done in creation, the, the change that we need to bring as we come in through the father's four faces into creation, the things that need to be done, we have the power to do that and we are growing in the understanding of what we are meant to look like. Right? I'm going to read some of this. Listen, if, if, if he could reveal himself as the Christ on earth, the whole world would be drawn to him. Some would bow the knee only because they had to. He is irresistible when he reveals himself for who he is. You know, there's a dimension of Yahweh when you step into the kingdom of heaven, when you look upon him, it is mind-blowing. You know, and I'm talking about Jesus in specific right now, Yeshua, the Yad Hei Shin Vav Hei. I'm not talking about the Father or the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about our perception and view of Yeshua. You know, he, he does what he does according to what's written on his scroll. He's glorified. He's taken back into the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and as he enters into the kingdom of heaven, he has a certain robe on. He has a certain dress on, a certain fire, a certain dimensional shift that's taken place. There's a glory on him. He's entering into the heaven as a son like me and you. You know, not, not as God. He enters in as one who has finished his scroll. He enters in as one who has done all that was expected of him. You know, he comes in and he is this proud, beautiful, incredible being that has done all that was expected of him. And the shine and the beauty and the power is oozing out of him. And, you know, there's a, a voice that echoes. There's a fire in his eyes. There is purity. There is holiness. He is this a being that, that everybody awes and oozes about. You know, and, and I remember the very first time I walked into the kingdom of heaven, there was almost the exact same scene. And, and I mean, I haven't fought my purpose. I haven't really done much yet. I didn't even know that it was possible to go into the kingdom of heaven. So the first time I walked in, the whole of heaven stops, you know, because there is a sun. And I know that there's been other suns the same way as me. And I remember walking in and everything stops. And I look at who I am as a spirit. And my spirit uh, being is closed in, in a flames of fire. You know, skin of matted diamonds, and internally there's, there's the colors of the rainbow just moving through. It looks like a, a, a galaxy, it looks like a dimensional constant shift taking place. And I'm looking at who I am, and I'm like, wow. I'm looking at the crowns on my head, and I'm like, blown away. And everything in creation just looks, and like, the mouth drops open. A son has come in to the kingdom, and I was a baby. You know, and I realized that we do not know who we are. We do not understand the power that Yahweh wants to bring a people to. And I'm not there yet. I'm not saying that I am. But, but we have to begin to realize that what Yahweh looks at is not this. It's not uh, 270 pounds. It's not six foot one. It's not red beard and no hair. It's not uh, um, Cobra Kai t-shirt. <laughs> it's not demonic. And um, you know, it's, it's a whole nother view. You know, he sees me for who I am, which is spirit. Right. You know, he sees as my spirit overshadows my soul, as my soul overshadows my body, as my body overshadows creation. You know, he begins to look at me and he calls me out and says, Son, I need you to understand the power that I've given you. The voice that you can carry in creation is greater than what they told you it is. You know, it's not about the things I speak. And the things we speak is very powerful because we, we have to understand my tongue is like a rudder. You know, when it begins to move and the frequency that it reveals and releases it has the power to create. And that's why Paul, uh, uh, um, James makes a statement. He says, your, your tongue is extremely powerful. You know, watch what you say. Like, for example, Yahweh calls, uh, speaks to um, Moses and he says, I am. You know, and we have to understand the power in that word because if I understand my image and the image I'm created in, what I release and that comes out of my mouth will create exactly that. And so he's calling a company of people that will come out of the faces of Yahweh into creation with the right voice, 
with the right frequency, with the right mandate to speak the right things. Right? We don't just reveal and release things because we feel it's a good idea. He says the blood-bought ones will wear the same clothes. Not because you, you need to be covered in your nakedness, but because we are part of the beauty of His kingdom. Because He has called us to that power. He has called us to that higher place. And we have to begin to understand it. He says some, some crowns are made up of uh, single huge gems. But the gems here are not like the ones on the earth. They have life. <laughs> they have the radiance and the color that gives and tells the story. That's why whatever I engage, the mantle that's placed on me in the spirit realm, it teaches me a different dimension. I remember standing before the Father on the sea of glass, and there was these fiery stones, and I was climbing on these stones, and every time I touched the stone, a part of my body was ignited. And as my body started ignited, there was revelation poured in. I remember engaging it to such a measure that I began to put crowns on my head as I stood before the Father. And we understand the different crowns, but I remember that everything that touched me at this point started teaching parts of my being a different way, a different understanding, a different revelation, to shift away from the old way of viewing yourself, to shift away from the old way of seeing who you are through your mother and your father's eyes or through your friends or your, your teachers and what they believe and what they said and the things that the TV says and the things that your pastor tells you. you know? And I know that these things are in a measure all true, but we have to align with the things that Yahweh calls us to. You know, there's a company of people that will see this on a daily basis, that will walk in it in its full measure. Not because someone's teaching it and I'm hearing someone talk and I'm taking what they hear and I'm writing notes and I'm studying it. Because at the end of the day, that is how we study under the sun and the moon. That's how you have to study under the sun and the moon because there's no other way. But when I begin to understand the measure in which I walk as a son, I go into the kingdom and my spirit has already got infused knowledge. Because it comes out of the Father. The only knowledge my spirit has is the knowledge the Father carries. And my soul doesn't perceive that because my soul was birthed in creation. Birthed into sin. So it was shaped by sin. It was taught by sin. Everything that I have known up to a certain point in my walk as a soul was birthed out of sin. Then I get restored, and now my spirit man has to pour into my soul a whole new revelation, a new dimension of understanding that comes out of pure light. That's not even almost the same, that it's not even aligning in any way, fashion, or form with what I as a soul used to know or carry. You know, and of course, as a soul, I could be a Christian for 20 years and be soulish. And I only have the soulish teaching and only have soulish revelation. Although I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest de dead and the newest come, if I have not divided soul and spirit, I'm not walking the face of the earth as a spirit being. I can pray in tongues until I turn blue in my face. If my spirit man is bound to my soul, I'm going to be soulish. That's why we understand Hebrews 4.12. You have to divide your soul and your spirit. You have to tear those two apart so that my spirit can overshadow my soul to the measure that my spirit, which is infused with all the knowledge of Yahweh, which is the only part of my being right now that can go into the kingdom of heaven and sit with the Father on the throne without burning to crisp. Mm -hmm. And I say that because the high priest, being the holiest of holiest man on the face of the planet, if he goes into the holy of holies with one sin, he's dead. You know, and my, uh, as a spirit being, I get to go where my father is. As a soul, if my spirit overshadows my soul at a night watch, my soul can go in and sit with the father and be in that place where the father is while my spirit is overshadowing it. That's why I remind myself the only reason I go into the kingdom of heaven is because my spirit is overshadowed by Yeshua. That's Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I live. I'm dressed in him, clothed in him. He didn't die for me. He died as me so that I can step into him and become him. That's why I entered into the yard, hey, vav, hey, as the shen. You guys okay? There are some crowns that have very un that are very unique in their design because they were earned in unusual circumstances. But they all tell their own tale. Mantles uh, are made extravagant more extravagant than anything seen on earth. And I remember, and this is the story I was telling, I remember standing before the Father and I had these two saints that were engaging with me. And they weren't particular, they didn't have names and saints that, oh, this is John, St. John, or this was St. Paul, or whatever. It wasn't like that. It was just two very powerful beings that's been in the heavens for a very long time. I could see the radiance of the glory of the Father on them and in them. And they had two mantles in their hands 
And I wanted these mantles because it was what I was being asking the Father for. I remember being fire and being intimacy. Fire meaning rep uh, revelation and transformation. And I've already had, I already have this mantle on my shoulders. It's called love. And I remember saying to the Father, I need these two mantles. And they were willing to give it to me. But as they gave me these mantles, in my heart I knew immediately that I have to lay down what I already have on my shoulders before the Father's throne. And it was not a trade in the sense of, well, I'm giving you this so that I can get that. It was a sacrifice in my heart that I had to make. Now, it took me a very long time to begin to engage the mantle of love. Because when I received it the first time, I was kind of, well, are you joking me right now? Do I look like someone that carries a mantle of love? You know, it makes me feel like I want to stand in a funny position. But I realized very quickly that it was one of the most powerful mantles that you could possibly have. And in teaching me and in training me how to engage with this mantle, by the time I got to this place in my walk with Yahweh, I was like, I cannot give this mantle up. I don't want to trade it for anything. I'd rather have a mantle of love on me than uh, fire and, and intimacy. And the Father said, I remind you, my son, that you cannot lose anything you trade into me because I will always multiply it back to you. It is my principle. It's what I do. It's who I am. And so I remember taking this mantle off, laying it down at his throne. As I laid the mantle of love down, the mantle of intimacy, mantle of fire went into the mantle of love and it became a new mantle that looked differently, that, that had different dimensional shifts in it and as the father took this mantle and placed on my shoulder i could feel how my relationship changed immediately the father started teaching me about my body and how important it is to love my body and the love that i have for my body is the love that he wants me to have for him and, and I mean, I know that it so freaks people out when I talk like that. It is not about bowing down to the Father. It's not about, about uh, hugging Him and holding Him and sitting on His lap. It's not about cuddling Him and, and wanting to kiss Him and be intimate with Him because, you know, I'm the bride and He's the groom. It's about understanding that it is a non-separated being. I can't be away from Him. I can't be out of Him. I can't be away from Him. I'm one with Him. We don't uh, spend time together because while well, I set time aside to spend time with Him. No, I don't because with my body, I don't set time aside to spend time with my body unless I go to the gym. But in essence, I am in my body all day long. I'm in communication with my body all day long. My body tells me what to do all day long. And my brain tells my body what to do all day time. There's a communication within the two that I can't even explain and express. And I remember in this place, Yahweh was beginning to teach me the intimacy that He truly longs for, the place of revelation that he wants to bring to us, the consistent change in belief system, that what I believe today, I might not believe tomorrow. And it doesn't make me a false prophet, it doesn't make me a liar, it means that I'm growing and I'm shifting and you're always aligning me continuously, consistently, because the infinity of who he is has to bring me to a place of revelation regarding who I am to become. And Yahweh is calling a people that understands that. He's calling a people that understands the beauty of what it means to carry the full level of revelation that He pours into us. And if you've been listening to my reels, I've been stuck on revelation for a while. And it's almost like Yahweh is calling a people that is allowing Him to bring revelation. Allowing you, allowing who He is to pour into you. Because what we knew today cannot be the same tomorrow. Because if Yahweh, I say this all the time, if Yahweh has to turn one degree, then all the revela revelation I had previously has to change. Because he's so much more. He's so much higher. He's so much b bigger. I cannot limit him to a book that's got 250 or 2,500 pages. And I can't limit him to only one book and say, if he's not in this book, oh, then it's not God. Because we understand how ridiculous that is. I hear people say this all the time. You can't even tell me that God speaks to you because he can only speak to you through his word. Well, that limits a God that's infinite, and it makes absolutely no sense, because the Bible is not relevant, and I say this with all understanding, it's not relevant to today. It's not the same. I can't take the scenarios in that day and bring it into this day. I have to read it and engage it as a living organism. I have to, as a spirit being, go in to the Word and receive it for what it was in the day. Because that's where the power is. That's where it brings me to a new dimensional understanding. Because I go in to one dimension of the Word to open up to other dimensions of the Word. That's the power of who I am as a spirit being. That's why I go into that which is written because the written is a living organism. When I go into that living organism, it begins to break open the realms to me where I now can engage that which is spoken, that which is alive, which means I get to go into the living letters. I get to see each one from the Aleph to the Taf, 
how it breaks up, how it opens up, how it's the fiery gate that breaks into who I am to expel a new dimension of revelation into me, to have me understand who my Father is, who I am, what He wants me to walk in, and the frequency that I need to have in the earth to have all things drawn to me, to have all things open up to me. It's almost like God is calling a company of people to understand what it means to put a focus on what He's put before me to open up a gate for that which is mine to come to me. And it's a slow progress of understanding. And there's, there's practices and there's exercises that New Ages have already grasped onto. There's um, Hebraic prayers. It's called the um, 42-letter uh, letter prayer or something like that, where they literally take a specific prayer. And if you focus this prayer on anything in your life, it opens up a gate for that which you desire to come in. And we've, we've spoken about it before, it's in a different measure, but we have to understand this, these truths are out there, we just don't believe it, we just don't take it. And Yahweh has called the people, just like Solomon, he had the ability and the capacity to do things beyond what we can fathom. He was the wisest man to ever live. You know, he had gold, he had made gold so prosperous, so, so abundant that it was everywhere, they could pave the roads with it. You know, it was like, oh, gold? I'd rather have a rock because I can't find rocks anymore because everything is just gold. You know, they had cedar wood that takes 50 years to grow. He wasn't even a king for 50 years. You know, it was like, you have to understand, he had the capacity to open a gate to draw things in because of the wisdom that he carried. And you're always calling the people that will understand, it's not, my, 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 my natural is not what it's about. I listened to people speak at the hookah lounge and, and one of the things they were talking about is the, the craziness of the church. The lady was telling me about a fight that broke out in, um, in the French quarters the other day between a church and a bunch of uh, transgender, uh, homosexual, the homosexual community, what do you call them, the A, B, C, D, F, G, H, L community, and I don't quite understand, but the church was looking for trouble and got their ass whipped. Are you joking me right now? That's not what the Father is talking about. I don't walk around with the cross to tell people to turn or burn. It's the love of God that leads man to repentance, you know. I remember Yahweh telling me a while back, I am going to teach you how to communicate with the world. Because right now, if you say Jesus in the world, they don't want to listen to you anymore. They will literally turn away from you and walk away because the church has broken that beauty into such broken pieces that nobody wants it. I always say this, my favorite chocolate is an arrow, an arrow slab chocolate, it's incredible. So if you have to put vomit around this chocolate, no matter how much I love it, I don't want it. I know what it tastes like, I know what it should taste like, I know what it should look like, but with vomit around it, I don't want it. It's disgusting, it's nasty, I will never be able to, even if you have to close it, if you have to wash it off, I still wouldn't be able to eat it because it's got that smell on it. You know, that's what the church has done with Jesus. They're sure, they've wrapped him up in vomit and presented him to the world and said, Hey, what do you think of this? Isn't this good? But it's a doo-doo list. It says, you should do this, you should do that. Well, God can't love a homosexual. What God do you serve that can't love a homosexual? What God do you serve that can't love somebody that does something stupid or that has a certain belief system or that has some mental disorder? What type of God do you serve that can't love you because you're in sin, that can't love you because you're doing something wrong? He died for all these things on the cross. And it's almost like we have gone stupid and we have stopped to think for a second who God really is. Because He's not the God that we serve. He's not the God that we believe in. He's not the God that we present to the world. Because when I listen to the world, the God that they see in the Christians is a scary, nasty, ugly God that's a bully. And I don't want anything to do with that God. It's not my God. And it's not your God. I don't know why or where they get that from. Because it's not scriptural. It's not the way it works. It's almost like, well, we are going to come to a point in our walk where we realize who we are. That the presence, the mere presence of a son changes someone's belief system. You know, just entering into a room, and all I do, I don't have to speak, you know, the Francis, Francis of the CC, I love this being, he used to say this, go into the world and preach the gospel, and if you have to, use words. Because if we understand the power of someone standing in a position as a spirit being, opening it himself up, and let all the glory and the fire and the fullness of who Yahweh is pour out into the community that he's in. And I remind myself, I'm expanding myself over New Orleans on a daily basis. I expand myself into every different city I go into. And all I do is open up who I am as a spirit being. Now my spirit 
lives and moves and has its being in the Father. That's where the glory, the fire, the fullness of all of Yahweh is. The dimensions of His fire, the dimensions of His beauty, all that He is, is inside of Him. And I get to go and um, live in that place. And when I come into the atmosphere of the earth as a spirit, I open who I am up. And all of that comes out into the atmosphere of the earth. All of that goes in to the hearts of the people that is so broken, the people that is so hurt. I, I was listening to this lady speak and basically she hates her life and this is your average person on the street your average person working without walking without jesus they hate their lives there's a depression that they don't talk about there's a sadness they carry there's a, a hate for themselves there's a hate for those around them it's almost like people don't show it but they don't want to talk to people anymore they don't want to know people's names they don't want to engage with people anymore they only do it because they have to and if they don't have to they won't i'd rather stay at home i'd rather stay away from people because people are doing this and people are doing that that is the brokenness of the world we're in and the church is not helping walking around with a sign that says turn or burn you know standing in front of homosexual communities screaming that god hates you you're an abomination to the kingdom of god well you're stupid this is not the God I serve, you know, but when you walk with him and you understand him and he's taught you how to engage in creation, then you just love. There's no judgment in love and the judgment that is there is to propel, to enhance. You know, if, someone's, if someone comes to me, I have spoken to this person the other day and he, she, his name is Bunny, help me Jesus. At the point that they spoke to me, they were a man, but they recognized themselves as a woman. Now, to me, personally, that's retarded. There's a glitch in your download. You have a mental disorder. You're a man if you have a penis. You're a woman if you have a vagina. And if you see it any other way, there's something wrong with you. But that's not, that's not the point of me being in front of this person. That is who they feel they are. My responsibility is not to try and tell them what's right and hallelujah. Jesus will not allow you in the kingdom of God because you are a sinner. Shut up, moron. You know, because Jesus would have been standing there, not even mentioned the idea or the fact that he's dressed like a woman, but he's a man, speaks like a man, but he's a woman or whatever the situation is. Uh, he would never have done that because he's a friend of sinners. He would be there and he would just love them. He wouldn't say anything. He would teach just like he would have taught you being spiritual born again. And you know, the father told me this many years ago. He says, when you speak about me to my people, speak to them as if they are spiritual born again Christians. No matter what they believe, no matter what they say, no matter what they look like, no matter what they do, you love them. You breathe the breath of Yeshua into them and over them. It's not about judgment. It's not about calling them out with their issues. Because Yeshua doesn't do that. He does that to the church. He calls the church, you hypocrites, your father, the, 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 the Satan, you know, change your ways. Because the church needs to constantly change. And if the church is not constantly changing, we can't expect the ignition of the glory of the Father to come into creation to change the hearts of the people. But when we begin to understand who we are and we come into the full measure of what He releases in us, it opens up the gateways in creation. It opens up the gateways in creation in the earth to begin to bring all people back to their original understanding. You know, and I've seen this so many times. All I have to do is be there. Accept someone for who they are. I don't care about your sexual preference. You know, uh, do I think it's right? Do I think it's wrong? It doesn't matter what I think. Um, it, it's about your life. It's about who you are and what needs to change. And what I say is not going to change you. Because if what I say can change you, then let's just speak and everyone will be changed. It is what I represent. It's what I open up. It is the alignment of what you need in your life to get you to where you're supposed to be. And me telling you that you're wrong is not going to get you to that point. You don't look at a fat person and say you're fat. They know that they're fat. They know that they need to grow, uh, uh, lose weight. You don't look at a skinny person and say, you need to pick up weight. They know they need to pick up weight. You know, there's a knowledge in all of us. And I can promise you, when that man that's dressed as a woman stands in front of a mirror, she knows, he knows that I'm supposed to be a man. But I don't feel like a man. I don't act like a man. I, I have different understandings. So I have to understand, this is who they believe they are. And me telling them they're not, is making them feel, well, how do you know? Because this is what I feel. Because the world has taught everybody to base everything you want to do on a feeling. But a company of people that has the right crowns, the right garments, the right mantles, we've engaged with the heavens, and we have dressed ourselves 
in a, a clothing that trains and equips us, that aligns who we are. We come from out of the kingdom of heaven into the earth with the right light, the right dimension of who the Father is. And we breathe it into creation. It realigns, it propels, it opens up. That's why Yahweh says, I need to rest my head. I need a place that I can rest my head. That's when he was talking about the foxes have, uh, have uh, you know, um, holes to live in, but the Son of Man doesn't have a place to lay his head. We understand that he was talking about his governance, his image. There was no place for him to set his image in creation because there was no one that looked like him. There was no one that talked like him. It was a bunch of religious nuts that didn't want to change. They just wants to hold on to the previous age. They don't want to move on from what the next level of the Father's heart is for the people. And now that we are beginning to understand, now that we are answering the creation's call, there is an image in creation that we are really setting into, where the order of Yahweh's headship is coming into place. And the things that was done in a certain way previously will never be done like that again. We will begin to see it for what it is and we'll have the blueprints for the day on a daily basis to bring what's in creation or what needs to be in creation to change the things that needs to come into full play according to what the Father desires. That is what's going to change the lives of people. That's what's going to bring the, the, the people back in order. Because right now, nobody wants Jesus. Because all we've done is the church, we've made it another religion. It's just another religion. You know, I was playing a scenario in my head. And, um, and the reason I was playing it in my head, and I know people are going to have an issue with this, but I had to get this message on my phone from the Illuminati. <laughs> and then I know, help me, Jesus. And they're telling me that they would like me to join the Illuminati, and, and this is all the benefits, and it's all riches and money and all this stuff. And then I, re I know that uh, in order to join these things, you have to lay your religion down. I'm thinking, my God, this is awesome because I don't have a religion. I don't have to lay nothing down. You know, it's not a religion to me. And I'm not going to do that. It's not my, my point. But I'm just saying, uh, it's no religion. There's no religion in me. I don't have to lay my religion. I have to lay my belief system down. It's not a belief system. It's a way of life. It's who I am. It's not something I'm trying to do. It's something I just do. And I have no other choice. It's not in me to choose. It's just already been. It's my DNA has changed. This is the life that I now live. And we have to bring across an understanding to those around us regarding what this is. Because everybody I have met over the last 10 years had the wrong view of who God is. You know, and we have been taught and educated now at a measure and a level where when we speak and breathe into creation, we can reset the mind of man into understanding who God truly is. So, Father, we just want to thank you and praise you. And I know that I said a lot, and I know that it might have been a lot of puzzle pieces that, that we have to physically put together to really make sense of everything that was spoken. But in my heart, I want to breathe this into creation, Lord. I want to breathe it into the hearts of your people to, to open us up, to begin to understand who we are, what's in creation for us to grab hold of, to put on, so that we can begin to walk in and understand who you are and breathe that revelation into creation to have our friends and our family and the ones that we work with and the people that is in our church and the people that's in the streets that we walk by, the drive by, the people that we see from afar, the people in the gym, the people in the shopping centers, people that we just want so badly to meet the God that we serve but we've wrapped him up in vomit that nobody wants. And so, Lord, I ask that we will begin to understand what it means to, to breathe the beauty of who you are into creation, to reveal and to show the, 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 the creation, the, the amazing, beautiful God that we serve without religion, without our do-dos and our don'ts, without our perception and our views, but in its pure form. And as we begin to change ourselves, that we begin to walk in your measure in all the things that you have for us. This is what's coming into creation because that's the frequency that we release. That is why sons coming together, you say, I need one takes a thousand, two takes ten thousand. A company of people that walks in the measure of Yahweh can literally change creation in its full measure. And Father, that's what we want to do. As we start governing what's ours, I pray that you open us up. Literally, open up who we are as spirit beings so the fullness of what's inside of us, which is all of you coming to creation, to change, to align, to propel creation back into order. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, my King. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.